Hi, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D print creator. In this episode we're going to see how I build a project from the ground up. All the way from creation to printing and then where it goes wrong we're also going to repair this project. So stay tuned! As you can see I'm in uh, Autodesk 123D design and this is great software for designing objects. The first thing I do is creating the simple outlines and I'm building it out of uh, homemade uh, cubes. I'm, I'm drawing it and, uh, from a small circle and a rectangle and now I'm hollowing it so I make it hollow. So, well, it is actually already a basket. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to take a look at how thick the mirror is because this has to be placed against the mirror and then there has to be build a wall on the back side of the mirror. So here I take a look at how big uh, the, the mirror is going to be, it's 3 mm thick. And now I'm creating a back for behind the mirror and you'll see that here. And I give it a round shape because if you make things round it's much much stronger. Well, it's way too thick at the back side now, so I have to make it a little smaller. And as you'll see, I'm making it smaller, I make a m little miscalculation, it has to be a little bit more small. So now it's also 3 mm thick and I give it round edges, because with the round edges it's way stronger. And also at the inside I'm giving it round edges. I take a look at all the sides to see if everything is correct. And now also the top layer will be chamfered and uh, also this is to make it stronger. The wall thickness is 3 mm thick and as you will see when I'm printing it uh, this is going to be a little bit of a problem but not a problem you can't repair. So I'm taking a look at it from all the sides now and now I'm deciding that there has to be a hole in the middle because when water falls in there has to be a possibility for the water to escape. So I'm making a small hole and also that hole will be rounded. And now I'm taking the sides of the object and I also make there a small rounding. And this isn't because it makes it stronger. The only reason I do this is because then my spatula can come between the build plate and the object so I can easily remove it. And now the last pieces are being rounded and the whole object will be very, very strong. As you saw, the video was sped up. So, uh, well, actually it was eight times faster being played out than I actually took uh, making the object. But it's a fairly simple object. But you will see that simple isn't the right word because I'm going to make this out of ABS and ABS has the tendency to shrink and this shrinking can give massive problems uh, because ABS is very strong and ABS can be so strong that it's going to break while printing. This is what you will see in the video I made of the printing of the object. So at first when I'm printing it you will see everything goes pretty okay. Uh, first it lays down a brim and after that it's going to make the bottom layer. And this bottom layer has to stick very good but I'm using BuildTag and BuildTag helps me to give it an enormous uh, adhesiveness so it, it's very adhesive and, and you'll see that the bottom layer doesn't come up. And this is really great because for such a large print as this is, it's uh, 15 millimeters without the brim, uh, normally you will see some warping, but with this build tag you won't see any warping at all. Then when it's going to build up, uh, you will see that uh, there is a little infill. I chose an infill of 40% uh, because it has to be very strong and I only make five layers thick, so one millimeter thick is a solid infill, then one millimeter there will be uh, an infill of 45% and then there will be a next floor on top of that from one millimeter because it's five layers and five layers at 0.2 to 
give you one millimeter. Then after this, uh, you will see that the walls are creating and this is going fairly good. So you see the walls building up and up and up and it is sped up really, really fast. But then at a certain point, uh, you will see that when the backside wall is already stopped building, that there is going to be a crack. And this crack happens first at the outside or the right corner. The bottom right corner, you will see that it cracks. And then also a crack happens from the inside. And you will see this, this is one layer and it will crack all the way through the print. As you can see when you look at it, at first there wasn't a crack. So this is happening while I am printing. And this is only because the, the ABS is shrinking and the force it can take with shrinking is so big that the layer bonding isn't strong enough. And now you see it breaking. And actually in this print you will see a lot more breakings. Uh, at the end I will have about 10 cracks in the whole print. And the only reason for this is that it's shrinking so much that yeah, it, it, it isn't strong enough to uh, hold the complete, uh, complete piece together. And actually this gap is pretty pretty big and I was thinking well should I stop the print? Hell no, I'm going to repair it. So this is what happened while printing. So sometimes you will see your print go wrong and it can have a lot of reasons. Uh, for example, airflow beside your print, uh, which makes your print break between layers. Uh, or uh, sometimes it has to do with the infill percentage or how thick your walls are and a lot of things which can go wrong and I will discuss those in later videos. But if it went wrong and your print has layer separation, then you want to repair it. And the best way to repair it is to create a slurry. So now we got the print of the print bed and what we can see here is that it's a nice finished print uh, but there are some slight problems and I can show it on this camera. Uh, you can see there is some layer separation. Here we have layer separation and here we see layer separation. There is also a little bit stringing but it's not that big. And here is layer separation and the fun thing we can see now is that this really is layer separation uh, because, of, uh, uh, because of the strength of the material to curl and to, to bend. Because otherwise, if it wouldn't have been that reason, then also, if it would have been layer shifting, which could, could also be a possibility, then the layer shifting would also have been visible here. And as we can see, it only happened on this half of the part and not on this part. So it's definitely uh, layer shifting, or sorry, uh, it, it's layers breaking. The, the bonding of the layers is not big enough, but it's not layer shifting because then this would have been defect as well. So now we're going to take a look in how we can repair this. First of all, we have to look what, what are the biggest problems. Well, this is a real big problem, this one here. And the reason why it's a real big problem is because it's almost around the whole print. So this is the most important one to fix. So here we got our slurry. And the nice thing of this object is I can put it like this and I can start painting on it. And with this painting I'm able to close the gaps. You can even break it open a little bit. So your slurry will really go inside.
the better it gets in between those layers, the better it will repair your print. And it doesn't matter if it goes all at once, because you can do this two times, three times. You can do this as often as you like. But the thing is, you have to create something which fills the gap. And at the end, all the acetone will vaporize. And you'll be left with a nice, clean print. You see how quickly I repair this part. But it needs some time to vaporize. And, uh, well, that won't be a short time. So, you have to be patient for this. Uh, eventually, the, the real strength will be there in about five, six hours. Maybe a little more. I will leave it to dry now. And after that's done, I'll get back to it and make another layer and another layer and another layer. And uh, we'll have to do this a few times and then you will see that this print is perfect. We have to take a look at how this is getting. And you can actually feel when it's good enough uh, and when you can start painting it again. Because when you go over it with your fingers and you feel it has a little bit of resistance, then you know it's still wet. But when it's all smooth, then you know you're good to go. And at this moment the inside gives resistance, but the outside is really it's time good to, to go. To start sanding it. And well, I'm going to take a 150 cent paper for it. And I'm going to give it some smooth sanding. Could of course bring it out to the shop and uh, send it there on the machine I have. So at the workplace I can do it on a machine. But the thing is that if you do that, it will get too hot. And when it gets hot, then you get a problem with it. So I rather don't do it at my working place. I'd rather do it by hand, the old fashioned way. And I think this is going to look nice, nice and smooth.
So this was a really long video and you made it all the way to the end. I cannot thank you enough for it. But can you please do something for me? Subscribe to my channel if you like this channel and give me a like if you liked this video. Also I had to cut out some parts which are pretty important. For example how you can make this ABS slurry. So if you want to see that video then click the link in the description down below. Because there you will see how I made the ABS slurry which I've uh, used to fill the gaps in this basket. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next week, next Thursday with another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.